You guys sent me your drums and today we're going to be taking a look at how I mix them in Logic and Ableton. What's up everybody, it's Fabio here from Noise, being really excited about doing this video. Thank you for sending all your stems, a lot of Germans and Italians, which is pretty cool. So it's great to see that people all around the world are watching. Dankeschön and grazie to you. Now the real reason behind this video is because even though the Making Your Drum Sound Fat and Ableton video got loads of love, link above, some of you weren't happy with the material that I was mixing. Why are you trying to fatten up a high pass loop to begin with. I'm still looking for the fatness. Where are the kick and snare? One guy wrote, are you Italian about eight times, but that's irrelevant. No real fat drums heard in whole video. Says a lot. How the heck is this wispy little loop of hats and a clap and a puck in any way fat? And you know what? I agree. It could have been a better loop. It could have been some better sounds, but I'm here for redemption. I'm going to be doing this in both Ableton and Logic because, you know, we family, aye? None of this. Oh, Ableton's so much better. F*** you, Logic. Let's, let's stop the DAW war. Not, not even a thing. I'm just making stuff up now. At the end of the day, whatever DAW you use, it doesn't matter. The plugins in each one are basically the same thing. They just have a different look and a different name. Before we crack on, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm loving your comments and your input, and with your feedback, I reckon we can make this the best music production and engineering channel in the world. Mix number one, Davide Missoni. Thank you so much for sending your amazing techno drums. So I'm going to start off with this really cool kick. I added a bit of drum bass for low end. I'll overdo it so you can hear the change. And then I used an EQ to take out some of the low mids. In particular, I found this frequency at around 200 was taking up a lot of room and making it sound quite muddy. And when I took it out, all of a sudden the kick had space. I could hear the lows and I could hear the highs. So check it out. One thing you'll notice I do is I group all of my plugins together so I can turn them on and off very quickly and I can understand what it sounded like before and where it's at now with ease. Okay, next up we have this clap. Now, let's have a listen to it without any processing first. My issue with this clap is that it's a little wispy and it doesn't have much of a crack to it. So I want to give it some attitude. I took out some of the high frequencies and I used the drum bus transient shaper to make it punchier and take out some of the sustain. Check it out. After that, I decided to re cue it to enhance some of those upper mid frequencies now that I had sculpted this new sound. Here's with and without all the processing. Quite different, but I think it has a little bit more of that techno attitude that I'm after. Now let's take a look at this ride loop. Let's have a listen to it first. Sounds pretty good to me. Now there's just one piercing frequency that I wanted to take out that was annoying me and I boosted some of the mid upper mids as well to give it more body. Just got to get rid of some of those pesky resonances sometimes. Now, don't worry if you're not familiar with some of these techniques. They are all topics that I'm going to cover in upcoming videos. So hold tight. In fact, I got one coming out in two days on three killer EQ techniques. Okay, now let's take a look at this more kind of ambient percussive loop, which I think is used to encourage groove and rhythm throughout the whole drums. So 
So the first thing I did was added some multiband dynamics and I did some downward compression on the high frequencies, so taming those a little bit, and upward compression or expansion on the lower frequencies, so accentuating some of that low end groove. For the EQ, just needed a low cut so it wouldn't interfere too much with the kick. And then I added an auto filter, which I side chained to another kick that I put in. So it's opening and closing to add even more movement to this really cool ambient percussion loop. So here's with and without all of those effects. Last but not least, a set of really fantastic rolling 16th hi-hats. Let's have a quick listen. So the first thing I did was added an EQ with a low cut and took out some harsh frequencies. Next up, I felt like the hats wanted a little bit of space, so I added a very, very short room reverb with a very, very small decay and just dialed in a tiny bit on the dry wet. I'll exaggerate it so we can hear. This is quite obvious when playing the hats soloed, but when we play everything together, I don't think it's going to be as noticeable. Last but not least, I added a flanger on the hats. I'm a sucker for flanger on hats. Let me know if you guys are too. And this just helps them move a little bit from side to side, gives them a bit more space and increases the stereo image. Now, as you probably already know, I group all the drums without the kick. I'm gonna whiz through this bit because I've already covered it in another video, but I'm basically just trying to bring everything together with a bit of compression, EQ, saturation, and parallel compression to finish it off. All right, so let's have a listen to the final result with first, so all the processing that I did and then without, so everything dry. Now, although the changes may be subtle, I do think that the drums feel better and have a little bit more of that techno attitude, as well as being more balanced. Thank you, Davide, for your submission. I'll send them back to you as soon as I can, and let's move on to the next mix. Mix number three, Sebastian Schultz. Dude, these drums sound fat already. Anyway, let's have a listen to the drum loop without any processing first. Oh yeah, dude, they sound tight. Sometimes as an engineer, it's really important to recognize when not to touch things and when to leave them as they are. So let's dive into this mix and see how I process things. Let's start with the kick. So I started with an EQ, low cut, took out some of the low mids, felt a bit hollow and woody there, and then added some mid high frequencies. I think you'll agree it's immediately better. It just cuts through a little bit more. It doesn't feel like it's taking up so much space. Next up, I have a saturator, added a bit of tone with this.
Saturator also helps you get a bit of a louder signal. If you're not sure how to use that, I'll leave a link above and it will take you to my video on how to get instantly louder drums. After adding something like a saturator, because it is changing the tone, you might feel the need to re-EQ, which is exactly what I've done. So I took out some other frequencies around the mids and then generally gave it more presence in the lows and the highs. So here's with and without all that processing. Okay, next up we've got a clap. Let's have a listen to it dry. So I hit it with an EQ, low cut, gave it a bit more presence in the low mid area and then took out this kind of harsh frequency. Then I hit it with the saturator to clip off those peaky transients so we can get more volume from it. Simple. Here's the layer to that clap. It just had one resonance that wasn't really sitting with me. That's about it. Seeing as those claps are a layer, I decided to group them together, do a little bit of EQ, take out some harsh frequencies in the highs, and then add a bit of compression because they were almost too punchy when played at the same time. I know some of you may be worried and be like, oh, but you just took out this and it just sounded better before. In essence, you're right, but I'm thinking of the bigger picture here. If I take out some high frequencies from this clap, it might help the hats a little bit better. It's not just about the individual sound. All right, next up we have this cool little hat loop. Let's take a listen. There was a little bit of a harsh frequency coming from this hat, but as soon as I took it out, I realized it lost something, so I added a high shelf boost to re-add some of that presence. Next up I added an audio FET rack and I've got two chains here. On the main chain, which we can consider the dry chain, so the original sound, I just added a little bit of chorus to enhance that stereo image. This is really subtle, but it's just something that's going to enhance the mix as a whole by taking it out of the middle. If you want a better idea of how to make your mixes wider, I'll leave a link to the video above. That will give you a little bit more detail as to why I do this. I also set up a second chain with a reverb on it, and I put an auto pan after the reverb, so the reverb's moving from left to right. So I'm just trying to increase that movement in my sounds as much as possible. Sometimes we can end up with something that's a little bit too static and we need a bit of magic, a bit of fairy dust to make it feel as if there's a bit more motion in your mix. Next we just have an open hat which sounds like this. Had a bit of a resonance in it and I didn't really like the high frequencies so I turned it into this. Then we have this really cool fill snare that comes in every so often. I hit it with an EQ and a saturator. Sometimes that's all you need, guys. You just gotta keep it really simple. Let's hear with and without the EQ, and then I'll add the saturator. A bit tougher, no? Last but not least, we have this clap, which doesn't happen very often. And because we have all these nice punchy sounds driving down the middle, I thought, what could I do to spread this sound? So I added a simple delay. I unlinked them and I switched it from sync 
to time. We've got one millisecond on one and then 31 milliseconds on the other. So what's happening is it's dividing the clap into two signals. It's playing the left signal first and then the right signal 30 milliseconds later. And you get this nice stereo feel. So here it is without the processing and then with. Then I just added a low cut and that was pretty much it. Now for hip hop drums, I actually take a different stance when it comes to grouping them. I don't do my normal drum bus chain with the compressor and so on because the snare is usually so powerful and the hat's at somewhere else so it can all start to sound a bit weird. What I actually like to do is just add a little bit of parallel compression. Let's have a listen to the original drums and then the new ones. You'll notice that the differences are small. They're so subtle and these drums, Simon, already sounded amazing. So there really wasn't that much to do. That's all from me guys, thank you so much for sending all your drum submissions. We're gonna be doing this every month, so keep sending them, I'll put a link below. I wanna hear what you guys are up to and see if I can make it sound better, even if it's really small changes. We're gonna keep dividing it up between Ableton and Logic, so don't worry if you use one or the other. Remember, the principles are the same. Thank you so much for tuning in, it's always a pleasure to see you or for you to see me, whatever it is. Hit me up in the comments below if there's any topics you want covered. I've got another video coming up in a couple of days on some killer EQ techniques, some of it which I used in this video. So if you're not sure what I was doing, make sure to tune back in on Tuesday and I'm sure you'll start to get your drums sounding fat without me. It's a big love here from Noise. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and I'll see you soon. Peace.